Okay, so this is the fifth lecture, and we'll be, um, it's like a redone of previous one. And we're just going to focus on axiom of choice and post sets. Or just focus on axiom of choice. Okay, so we let index set be non-empty, and we let x be a set. And we let this be a subset of x, okay? Then we define the union to be the set of all a and x, such that a is an x lambda for some lambda. And would be the intersection to be that set of all a such that you're in x lambda for all lambda in that next set. Okay, so for some and for all. The union and intersection. That is the meaning. Okay. And here's some note. So we suppose the index set to be non-empty. What happens if the index set to become empty? Well, for the union, if it is non empty, so suppose it's non empty, we have an element. Then we have that x is an x lambda for some lambda in the empty set, which is a contradiction. Which means that it must be an empty set. Well, you might guess, well, for intersection, it might also be empty, right? Because, okay, so, yeah, I guess that, but it turns out to be wrong. So why? So for the intersection, if x is not in the intersection, right? If you're not in the intersection, we follow by definition, which means that there exists, right? There exists an element from an empty set such that you're not in it, which is a contradiction because we say that there is an element in the empty set, which means that we can't have x is not in this, which means for all the x you must be in this, which means that the intersection is the universal space, right? Is is the everything, right? Is everything. Okay. All right, let's just move on. We define this set. You might already seen that. So lambda be not, no. The index set to be non-empty. And we have a collection of sets. So they're just collection of subsets, okay? And we define this set to be all the function that takes uh, the index set to x such that you're each lambda f lambda is an x lambda for all lambda and in the, in the exit. Okay, so this is the notation. And element element in this set is called choice function. So their choice function. Okay, so we require them to be the subset of x. What if some of them are empty? Then followed by definition, which means that we have f lambda naught is an x lambda naught right which is false right you're in some empty set it's false right which means that it must be empty right this set must be empty if it's not empty if it's not empty we can find a function blah 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 which means that for this lambda non we have lambda not is in the empty set right an element is in the empty set which is clearly false which means that we can't have any elements in this set and we come a new definition with that for any x y non empty x to the power of y is the uh, set of all function from from y to x okay from y to x set of all function right which is followed by our notation right is this where y is our index set right y is our index set for each y and x y f is a function which means that f y is an x Right? So our x, y, x is equal to the space x for all y. Okay? So this is just explains what is this definition. This, everything comes from this. Right? Okay. So here we have some discussion. So do the choice function always exists? Right? Suppose the lambda stack is finite, non-empty, and all the x lambda is non-empty. Then is yes, by... Thermal Franco axioms, right? Thermal Franco axioms. So this is potentially is gonna be my some new topics, right? Potential topics, new series, right? I may make a series on set theory. Set theory. And if this set is not empty, and is an arbitrary set, and for each lambda, x lambda is also not empty, but there are a subset of the natural numbers. Which means that for each lambda, we can define x lambda to be the minimum element 
of the set of natural numbers, right? So we're given a set of natural numbers, we can always find a minimum one. Okay, which means that we have the choice function. There exists a choice function. And now for each lambda, we let P lambda between uh, define L lambda and R lambda. So pair of left and right shoes, okay? And we let F be such that you just choose the left shoes. Then the choice function is not empty, right? We have a choice function. But here comes the problem. For each BN, we let BN be a pair of identical socks. Then Zermolo Franco axioms can specify our choice for all pairs simultaneously. Okay, all pairs simultaneously. Okay, so here's the problem. To solve for, we have to introduce a new axiom, which is independent of our Zermolo Franco uh, set theory, which is the axiom of choice. The axiom of choice says that, well, for any index set and for each lambda, and each x lambda is not empty, right? subset of x, then there exists a choice function. Right? As long as you're not empty, you're arbitrary, and our discussion is not empty, subset of x, then the choice function, there exists one. Okay? So this is like really the axiom of choice. <laughs> and here's some uh, exercise. So we want to show that axiom choice is equivalent to axiom choice the um the disjoint version so axiom choice disjoint version which means that well non empty da da non empty but we require that they're all disjoint right they're all disjoint then the choice function exists so we want to show that this is equivalent to our axiom of choice so this is like easier to understand right so right x lambda 1, x lambda 2, x lambda 3, x lambda 4, right? They're all disjoint. Well, here just like the finite case, but it could be arbitrary, but they're all disjoint, right? Then we can just pick element from here, we can pick element from here, we can pick element from here, right? F, right? Pick element from here, here, right? But for axiom choice, it's like kind of arbitrary, right? Axiom choice is like arbitrary, right? This, so here we require they all disjoint. And the power of logic shows that they are equivalent, right? So instead of like talking about this case, it's equivalent of talking about this case. You see? So the proof, so this direction, axiom choice implies this is trivial. Right, because we just follow by definition. This, this, this. Well, we didn't require they to be a disjoint, right? As long as this, then we have this non-empty. So this can, can be uh, thrown away, right? Right, this direction is trivial. And for the reverse direction, we need to use Cartesian product, okay? So for each lambda, we like y lambda to be the Cartesian product of lambda and x lambda because x lambda is defined to be non-empty right i mean i mean here here right they're all non-empty which means that y lambda is also non-empty and we want to show that they're disjoint if we have lamb, uh, lambda not equal to beta if we can f there is an element so suppose for a contradiction then a is in y lambda and y beta like the, uh, the order pair, right? Which means that we have, right? This correspond then this corresponds to what? Beta, right? Times x lambda times x beta, right? So if A is in the intersection, which means that A must be equal to lambda and equal to beta. So we define to be not equal to each other, which is a contradiction, which means that we can't have any elements in the, any, any intersection, all right? So here we are well set up, right? It's okay to define Cartesian product. It is still a set, right? Which means that we have a choice function, right? By, by disjoint version, right? Disjoint version, we have a choice function, which means that we can pick an element in the set, in this set, such that the set of all, you know, by definition, where each y is 
the index set Cartesian product with all the unions okay the unions of all oh my god the, the, the okay the union of all x lambda it is our set y okay so now which means that each g lambda is in this set which means that g lambda is equal to lambda y for some y and x lambda if we just define a new function f lambda is equal to y we're done right this is like we used we use this uh, we essentially we're using this condition and we construct the Cartesian product then we can show that oh they are disjoint right then we can find a choice function well if you're a Cartesian product then we have this element and we can just define f a new function to be this element right so this is uh the construction okay so where y is equal to this right okay and we have one more thing is that we prove the axiom choice is equivalent to the following statement okay so this this statement is uh when i see axiom choice right when i when i was reading the book um i think is terence tall terence tall uh analysis one when i read his book this is this is his definition of axiom of choice okay but in my prof's axiom choice definition they it turns out that they're equivalent so it doesn't really matter how do you define it because they're equivalent and when i first time read um this uh, statement well i have no idea what is it talking about because it is kind of abstract right like f of a set is in the set like something like this is already <laughs> making people confused right so okay let's just uh prove that they're um they're equivalent so what is the statement right so if you have a non-empty set then we there exists a function from the power set but a non-empty set to x so your input is all the subset of x but the empty set right we just don't we just don't talk about the empty set so for any subset this function takes the subset to this set okay so if a is the subset of x your function it takes value a and it maps to x right it maps to x if it belongs to a a is a subset of x so you're you map to x right does it really matter so f of a is an a right this for any subset okay there is a there exists a choice function like, if you want to say so right okay so prove this direction well this is really kind of like if you just right so this like really this really looks like our index set right from index set to x such that f lambda is belongs to x lambda for any lambda n right so we just let this set to be our index set and for each a right in the index set well this index is the power set we let we define x a to be equal to a okay so we associate a subset of x to be just equal to a okay and x a is not empty because a is in this set right so here we just use the axiom of choice right there is a choice function x a which means that if there's a choice function which means f a is an x a which is a for all a in this set so f a is an a okay isn't that smooth okay so for the reverse direction well for the reverse direction we want to use this to show the axiom of choice okay so how do one like press like start the proof right because well notice that the powerful the power of this axiom is that we can we're providing the existence of the choice function right for any non-empty set right well look at our 
definition of axiom choice, right? For any index that's not empty, for any x lambda I'm not empty. The choice function is not empty. Okay, this is what we want to prove, right? But can we use the condition on the index set? Because it, it works for all um, all non-empty set, right? Well, I tried is not working. But it turns out to be right if we use the condition on each non-empty x lambda, right? So for any x lambda, we define a function f lambda, right? Because we're given this, right? We f lambda to be that f lambda of a lambda is an a lambda for all a lambda and the power subset of x lambda. Okay, so x lambda is the set we're talking about. So x lambda, okay? and we have the function f lambda to be that f of a lambda is an a lambda for any a lambda in x, and we do this for we just do this for any lambda in the nx set. Okay? Now, we define the, our function f lambda to be f lambda of x lambda, right? Then we know that this thing, right by our definition, we'll copy from here, right? For any a lambda is a subset of x. Well, it's a subset of itself, so, right? So f lambda is an x lambda. Well, this is what we want. Right. This is what we want. So, if axiom of choice is not true, then we can conclude that there exists two sets that is, neither of those can be mapped injectively into each other. So this is what we don't want to be true. Okay, this is what we don't want. Okay, and we start our. Uh, stuff. So this is really just the, we just, uh, uh, I mean, repetitive from last lecture, right? So relation is a subset of the Cartesian product such that we write this, right? It's a subset of the Cartesian product. And we have a partial order re relation. Okay, and a chain is a totally ordered set so that you can compare, you can compare any two elements. So this is really just the same, all right? I just copy it down. So it's maximal. If maximal means that for any y, if you have this, then x should be equal to y. And the maximum element is that for any y, we have y less than equal to m. So the maximum is that we can compare any element in x to the element m. And the maximal is that as long as we have this, we have this. Right? So it's not guaranteed that we can compare every element to this. It only states that if you have this, then you have this. So if you can't compare, you can't say anything. But if you can, if you cannot compare, you can't say anything. But as long as you can compare them and you have this relation, then we have this relation. But the maximum means that for any element, you can compare them and you have this relation. This is some like some stuff, maximum and maximal. And we have to find a well ordered, so it, we're given an order, right? So a well order is that for any non empty subset, it has a minimum element. So minimum, mini, minimum. And note that well ordered means that it's totally ordered, right? Why? Because for any non-empty subset, we just consider it a two-element set, right? Two-element set, we say it has a minimum element, which means that we can we can we can we can compare them like minimum element, right? For any for any for any m in the set x y, right? We have a minimum. So we either have x less than x or x less than so you know what I'm saying, right? And I'll conclude this uh, lecture for the claim. It's the axiom of choice equivalent to Zorn's lemma equivalent to all ordering principle. So what is axiom of choice? We already know what is axiom of choice, the existence of choice function. And Zorn's lemma means that if you have a whole set, partially ordered set, and if we have every chain has an upper bound, then you have a maximum element. Okay, so this is the Zorn's lemma thing. 
and wall ordering principle means that any non lipid set admits a wall ordering. So we will show that they're equivalent, all equivalent to each other in next uh, lecture. Okay, see you guys.